Isaiah 9 6 Trinitarian Deception Part 2 The Shocking Truth In my last video we saw how Trinitarians use Isaiah 9 6 to prove Jesus is the Everlasting Father. This is because the modern translations say Jesus is the Mighty God and Everlasting Father. We also saw how the modern translations of Isaiah 9-6 contradicts the Trinity faith who do not believe Jesus is the Everlasting Father. We now move on and discover another shocking fact. In this video I have saved the best until last where I will show you how Trinitarians are again very possibly not using good translations of Isaiah 9-6 which is why so many Trinitarians are contradicting their own Trinity faith. Seek and you will find said Jesus. And when we do seek we certainly do find and discover there are textual differences of Isaiah 9-6. Now when I started researching Isaiah 9-6 I was shocked to the core to see what I saw. I looked in the interlinear translation because this is often a good translation from the Hebrew Bible and notice what's missing. Father the word Father is actually missing from this translation. I immediately noticed more fishy Trinitarian translations going on here. Why is the word Father missing? And here is another interesting fact. Because if you look at this identical translation of Isaiah 9, 6, you find now the word father has been added in. So what's going on? If you know, please tell me. I'm no scholar, but I can easily see an ordinary person like me, there's some more fishy business going on here. First the father is missing from the translation, now the father has been added in. Fortunately, I took that first picture of Isaiah 9-6 some time ago when I was first doing my research over a year ago and preserved the evidence that the word father is actually missing from that translation. But as we clearly see has now been added in. And here is something else that's quite interesting. If we click on the Hebrew word to see what the Hebrew word means, the translators tell us the word means continually, eternal, ever, forever and so on. And there is nothing said about the Father. Now please may I confess, I am no Bible scholar. I am an independent researcher who is an ordinary man off the street in no denomination. So I asked Sir Anthony Buzzard who is a well-known Bible scholar what does this mean and why is father missing from the Hebrew translation and here is what Mr Anthony Buzzard said Abby is father of the age to come. This is the meaning which the LXX gives to this. Parent of the coming kingdom or is exactly what Jesus will be. Modalism is nonsense. But Jesus is the supervisor of the age to come. Friends, while making this video I received another very interesting email from Sir Anthony Buzzard 
regarding Isaiah 9.6. Let's have a look. He says, the Elex and the Vulgate Latin translation have father of the future. For a child is born to us and a son is given to us and the government is upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, God the Mighty, Father of the world to come or the future age. Here is another version that I was not aware of, showing how it is worded differently again. Mr. Buzzard continues by saying, Mighty God is a divine hero reflecting the divine majesty. You know that Moses was called God, not God. So says the standard Hebrew lexicon defining El Gibba in our verse. So the Hebrew has mighty God and father of the future. Now let's look in the translation of the complete Jerusalem Bible. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, dominion will rest on his shoulders, and he will be given the name Peleyotes, El Gibraviat, Sashalom, wonder of a counselor, mighty God, father of eternity, prince of peace. Notice the textual differences. Now notice an even greater difference in the Septuagint. Which reads, because a child was born for us, a son also given to us, whose sovereignty was upon his shoulder, and he is named messenger of great counsel, for I will bring peace upon the rulers, peace and health to him. His sovereignty is great, and his peace has no boundary upon the throne of David and his kingdom, to make it prosper and to uphold it with righteousness and with judgment from this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord Sabaoth will do these things. Did you notice the whole verse saying, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace is missing and completely worded differently. Is this the original? Was this what Christ quoted from? Many believe this translation and reveals what Isaiah 9-6 most likely said and could be very close to the original. This is also believed to have been translated by Jewish scholars around 300 to 200 BC and came from the most ancient and reliable manuscripts available. The different translations prove again there is something fishy going on with the translators. And many also believe the modern translations like below are corruptions that crept in. Has Isaiah 9-6 deliberately been mistranslated by Trinitarian translators to give the illusion that Joshua is God? If not, then why do so many use Isaiah 9-6 to prove Jesus is God or he is the everlasting Father. There is something interesting to know about Jerome, who is known for the translation of most of the Bible into Latin, the translation that became known as the Vulgate and the Latin Vulgate translation is dating around 400 AD which is a close translation of the modern verses containing Mighty God Everlasting Father. Notice what we read about Jerome. The Vulgate is a late 4th century Latin translation of the Bible 
That became the Catholic Church's official version of the Bible during the 16th century. The translation was largely the work of Jerome, who in 382 had been commissioned by Pope Damascus to revise the old Latin Gospels then in use by the Roman Church. Notice who this Pope was. Pope Damasus I, c. 305 to the 11th of December 384, was Pope of the Catholic Church, from October 366 to his death in 384. He presided over the Council of Rome of 382, that determined the canon or official list of sacred scripture. He spoke out against major heresies in the church, including Apollinarianism and Macedonianism, and encouraged production of the Vulgate Bible, with his support for Saint Jerome. He helped reconcile the relations between the Church of Rome, and the Church of Antioch, and encouraged the veneration of martyrs. Did you notice there? The Pope encouraged the veneration of martyrs. Were these Christians killed for not believing Jesus is God or the Trinity? We continue to read. The Catholic Church affirmed the Vulgate as its official Latin Bible at the Council of Trent, 1545-63. Though there was no authoritative edition at that time, the Clementine edition of the Vulgate of 1592 became the standard Bible text of the Roman Rite of the Roman Catholic Church and remained so until 1979 when the Nova Vulgata was promulgated. It seems the translations that are mostly used by Trinitarians today were done by Jerome for the new Catholic Church. We know from the Nicene Creed that these people were the first to define and teach Jesus is true God and therefore enforce a new doctrine which then developed into God and his Son and the Holy Spirit being free called the Trinity. But who were the first false prophets John warned us about in 1 John 2 18 and 19? It is interesting to see how Trinitarians give us the answers themselves. Nine early church fathers who taught Jesus is God. If the Trinitarians are correct, notice how they are proven with their own hands who were the first false prophets, who could very well be the first false prophets John warned us about. Notice again how the Trinitarians teach that the early church fathers were the first to teach Jesus Christ was God. This fact cannot be denied that the Trinity is well documented in history, that is how it was established. The Catholics admit themselves they were the first to define the Trinity, in other words God as three persons and not one breaking the first commandment. Notice the triple goddess, the original holy trinity found throughout ancient Europe. And yet God said there is none like him. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people who are around you. Yet we find countless trinity gods just like the Catholic Trinity, or one God as three persons. Children, it is the last hour and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come, therefore we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. 1 John 
2, 18 and 19. Notice how St. John warned people about the false teachers already teaching in his day. What are the Apostolic Fathers? The earliest church fathers, within two generations of the twelve apostles of Christ, are usually called the Apostolic Fathers, since tradition describes them as having been taught by the twelve. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. 2 Peter 2 3 This is also very interesting to notice below how others who believe Jesus is God and yet in their other hand are brave enough to admit the early church fathers were Catholic and were the first false prophets. Notice how the writer of the article above writes, according to what is written, they were Catholic liars. Now these are not my words, but others who also believe Jesus is God or in a trinity. Although there are textual differences of Isaiah 9.6, what then could be the correct version of Isaiah 9.6? Or should we be instead asking, does it matter? Because what does matter is what is contained in Isaiah 9.6. Because the amazing fact is, we find the truth is still contained in all the different translations of Isaiah 9.6. Notice what is in all the translations of Isaiah 9.6 English Standard Version For us a child is born, to us a son is given. Jerusalem Bible For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, dominion will rest on his shoulders. The LXX because a child was born for us, a son also given to us. We clearly see in all the translations how they all have the same words. For to us a child is born. Which all say he will be ruling upon the throne of David. This confirms with the many prophecies of Jesus. Let's have a look, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Luke 1 31, 33 Let's acquaint ourselves with this great fulfilled prophecy. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man, unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, 
for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Jesus arriving confirm with the prophecies of Jesus in the Old Testament. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who art too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Micah 5, 2. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Micah 5, 4. The final facts. The evidence revealed the biblical facts that certainly proves Isaiah 9 6 is a future messianic prophecy of Jesus. Jesus is not God or the Father as the Oneness Pentecostals and Trinity faith so wrongly believe. Jesus told us himself, And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Matthew 23, 9. Why can't most understand Jesus always declared God is his father? Then how is Jesus that same father? Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my Father and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. John 20, 17. Is there more than one true God, the Father and the Creator? According to Paul, God is the only one true God and Father. For us, there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist, 1 Corinthians 8.6 Jesus always will be and already is our wonderful counsellor who is presently at his father's side proving he can't be his father if they are side by side but is with his father acting as one as a father with his father and as our mediator between God and man, as our Prince of Peace, but who is our wonderful brother. For there is one God, and there is one mediator, between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Finally, God Almighty, the one true God and Father will rule through his begotten Son, the Christ, as Father to complete and accomplish his new kingdom to come forever. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you, and peace from him, who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits, who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth, who loves us, 
and has freed us from our sins, by his blood, and made us a kingdom, priests to his God. And Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, Amen. God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, and who was, and who is, to come, the Almighty, Revelation 1, 4-8. What more do we need to know? We need to know what most do not know. There is only one person who is God, who is the Father alone, who sent his literal begotten Son, who is Jesus Christ alone, and that by believing you may have life in his name, John 20, 31. Do you know the true Christ? Who is it? that overcomes the world, except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God.